Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Mohammed Yusuf. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting. Following the session, the Cabinet Secretary General Dr. Yasser al Nasser gave the following statement. The Cabinet hailed the importance of the content and directives of the speech delivered by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa for the 75th UN General Assembly, commending the Kingdom's message to the world for maintaining world peace and His Majesty's call to resolve disputes and strengthen humanitarian solidarity to face health challenges and increase the readiness of future countries. The Cabinet highly praised the speech's inclusion of all matters that concern the Arab nation according to the Kingdom's comprehensive vision and the constants of its policy regionally and internationally, the most important of which is ending the Palestinian-Israeli conflict. The Cabinet lauded the turn for, out for the clinical trials, which highlighted the humanitarian values of the Bahraini people, noting the achievement of reaching 6,000 volunteers in six weeks since the beginning of the trials, which reflects the community's awareness and their keenness on fulfilling their national duty in support of the national efforts to combat the coronavirus. The Cabinet also hailed the outstanding contributions in the humanitarian and diplomatic fields and the international appreciation of the Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Prince Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabr Al Sabah, which reflect His Highness's achievements and global appreciation and respect. The Cabinet called to alleviate the tension and escalating clashes between Azerbaijan and Armenia in Nagorno-Karabakh and res resort to dialogue and peaceful means of resolving disputes in light of the international law and the decision of the Security Council. Following the directives of His Majesty the King to unify national efforts and face the repercussions of the pandemic and ensure the health and safety of citizens and residents, the government decided to take care of 50% of insured Bahrainis in the private sector for a period of three months starting October, benefiting 23,000 Bahrainis and 4,000 institutions. Based on the recommendation of the Executive Committee led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, the Cabinet approved a draft law regarding higher education. Based on the directives of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister to form a committee to revise laws, regulations and monitoring on pharmacies, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince directed a committee led by the Minister of Finance and National Economy, the Minister of the Shura and Representatives Councils, the Minister of Electricity and Water Affairs, representatives from the Crown Prince's office, the Ministry of Interior and the Supreme Council for Health to follow up on the directives. The Cabinet approved a governmental memoranda on the effect of the Constitutional Court ruling regarding the fall of the work of the two parliamentary investigation committees due to the economic situation and on the fairness of the distribution criteria for housing requests and the cost of building housing units and taking into account the technical conditions in the design of housing units. The Cabinet approved amending the law on the prohibition and combating money laundering and terrorism financing. The Cabinet approved restructuring the Ministry of Interior and add the National Center for Siberia to the structure. The Cabinet approved amending the law and safety regulations and monitoring of small vessels. The Cabinet approved issuing an electronic tourist visa for multi-travels valid for 10 years for the same fees for the current 5 years one and allows its holder to stay for 90 days until applied for it electronically. The Cabinet then discussed the economic report for the second quarter of this year, which showcased the economic performance of the Kingdom during the pandemic. The Cabinet then discussed the results of the high-level UN participation regarding sustainable development goals that His Majesty the King received an invitation to participate in, as well as the results of the Arab Minister's meeting. The Cabinet also discussed the results of the 59th meeting of the Trade Cooperation Committee and the results of the 47th meeting of the Industrial Cooperation Committee of the GCC and the results of the meeting of the 112th session of the Executive Council of World Tourism Organization. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met remotely with the outgoing Editor-in-Chief of the Gulf Daily News, George Williams. His Royal Highness highlighted the important role of the national press in reporting on the Kingdom's many achievements across all sectors, adding that media journalists and press outlets are partners in the Kingdom's development process. His Royal Highness noted the broad history of the Kingdom's national press, represented by those who established it, and the following generations who continue to provide professional and responsible journalism to inform the public. His Royal Highness acknowledged George Williams' extensive career with the GDN, wishing the outgoing editor-in-chief success in his future endeavors. Williams expressed gratitude for the opportunity to meet His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and for his continued support towards further strengthening the role of the Kingdom's national press. 
The Speaker of the Representatives Council, Fawziya Zainal, praised the Royal Directors of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to support all national efforts in order to confront the repercussions of the corona pandemic at the local level. Zainal affirmed the full parliamentary support to take all constitutional and legislative measures to support the country's approaches to provide the necessary liquidity and handle the repercussions of the current situation. She expressed deep thanks and appreciation for the continuous efforts made by the government headed by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister and for the support and follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, as well as the achievement of Team Bahrain led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince. Zainal noted that the financial stimulus package will contribute to supporting and sustaining the national economy, mitigating the negative effects of the exceptional situation experienced by the economic sectors and activating the financial and economic package for the benefit of citizens and support to the most affected sectors. She hailed the efforts of the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, and his outstanding keenness to support the commercial and economic sector and achieve goals and qualitative initiatives in order to continue supporting the effect sectors. The Shura Council Chairman Ali Saleh hailed the decision of the government and implementation of the directors of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to achieve citizens' interest and ensure economic and financial stability for the kingdom. He praised the government's decisions during the cabinet, affirming the Shura Council's commendation of this initiative and its keenness on prioritizing their draft laws. Al Saleh noted that this step will support institutions most impacted by the pandemic and will enhance the stability of the tourism sector. Shura Council Chairman Ali Saleh delivered a speech during the opening of the first international virtual conference on artificial intelligence, where he affirmed that the conference is a transition of His Majesty the King's directives to adopt digital technology. Al Saleh noted that during the opening of the last session of the Shura and Representatives Councils, His Majesty the King called for a comprehensive national plan to secure dealing with the requirements of the digital economy, adding that AI, biotechnology and robotics will contribute to developing the Bahraini society. He highlighted the efforts of Bahrain Polytechnic in launching AI academic courses in cooperation with Bahraini and global authorities. He also stated that the kingdom's advanced technical infrastructure contributed to supporting efforts to face the global crisis resulting from the pandemic. The President of the Supreme Council for Health Lieutenant General, Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, inaugurated the joint initiatives between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the Dubai Health Authority Forum, which was held remotely with the participation of a group of officials in the health sector in Bahrain and Dubai. He said that the forum represents an opportunity to introduce the developments of the national initiatives aimed at strengthening the health sector in Bahrain and Dubai, most important of which is the National Health Insurance Scheme, Sahati, that aims to improve the quality and efficiency of health services. He noted that Bahrain seeks to develop a comprehensive system of health services in line with the directives of His Majesty the King and the government program to embody the goals stemming from the National Vision 2030. The President of the Supreme Council for Health stated that the National Health Plan in Bahrain is based on several aspects, including the creation of an efficient and sustainable health system that gives the patient freedom to choose the health service provider, as well as the adoption of an integrated, sustainable health care approach. The Ministry of Finance and National Economy highlighted its ongoing efforts to drive economic growth through launching a number of new financial and economic initiatives benefiting the kingdom and its citizens. The ministry emphasized that the economic stimulus package launched to support the kingdom's citizens and the private sector through a provision of innovative initiatives has contributed to supporting economic diversification and sustainable economic growth during this period. The ministry further emphasized that the decisions to gradually resume and reopen various economic sectors and activities starting from last May has had a positive impact on a number of key economic indicators, resulting in improvements across a number of sectors during the third quarter of 2020 in comparison to the second quarter. After a monthly decline in imports to the kingdom since the onset of the global COVID-19 pandemic, the value of imports increased by 88.1% in August compared to July 2020. The ministry underscored its commitment towards realizing the kingdom's economic goals by creating quality initiatives that contribute to enhancing opportunities for citizens and support the private sector.
Gulf Air announced its resumption of direct flights to and from Saudi Arabia, starting with Jeddah on September 27th, with plans to resume flights to more of its Saudi destinations soon. By resuming its flights to Jeddah, the carrier will have resumed flight to approximately 40% of its original network destinations. Being one of the few airlines that continued its commercial operations, Gulf Air continues to work closely with government authorities in various destinations to resume its operations as soon as airports are reopened. The BIPD organized an online lecture titled The Role of Media in Different Variables, which was delivered by the Director of Social Media at the Ministry of Information, Dr. Yusuf Muhammad. The program included a number of educational lectures with multiple aspects aimed at spreading awareness and knowledge of national variables in various circumstances and enhancing individuals' perceptions of the political cult culture in all aspects. The program aims to introducing the importance of positive participation, rights and duties as a basis for development and reinforces the values of citizenship, national belonging, acceptance of one another and constructive dialogue which all falls in line with the reform project of His Majesty the King. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached 6,230 with 635 recoveries, 586 registered new cases and two deaths. 144 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 433 are contacts of active cases and 9 are travel related. The deceased were a 64-year-old citizen and a 56-year-old expatriate. The ministry expresses its heartfelt condolences to the families of the deceased and urges everyone to adhere to the rules, follow instructions and avoid public places when possible.